Alright, so let's get to the worst class. Yeah, that's sort of an inside joke. But the Infiltrator. Now, I mentioned this before, but I don't really like to level up Trademark as quickly on Infiltrator. Uh, I'll discuss that in a second. Let's go over the powers. You have Disruptor and Cryo Ammo, just like Soldier. Trademark's Tactical Cloak, it cloaks you. Like either a Romulan or a Rogue, I suppose. Then you have Incinerate, AI Hacking, you're familiar with those. Passive is Operative. It's a weapon damage and power recharge passive that also grants time dilation while you're viewing uh, the sc sniper scope. And of course Paragon and Renegade bonus. In this character I have a Neural Shock as the bonus power and that's what I would recommend for Infiltrator. Nearly 99.99% of times. Helps fill in uh, Rapid Cooldown CC which is relative weakness of Infiltrator. In general, Infiltrator's strength is single target damage, and this will be helpful. In any case, if you import a level 50 character from Mass Effect 1, you'll have four points to play with. Go ahead and get Disruptor Rank 2 right away. You want Synthetic Stun for Lazarus and Freedom's Progress, and then you can go ahead and get Rank 2 Tactical Cloak. So. Level 3 should look like this. Level 5 you have another 4 points, but what I like to do is instead of going through Tactical Cloak, I'll go ahead and get the first 2 ranks of Incinerate, and then I'll go ahead and throw a point in Operative. And so this is what it'll look like on Professor. The reason I do this is partly to stave off ammo problems with the Infiltrator early game. The weapon training are pistols, SMGs, and sniper rifles, and that sniper rifle is going to be the Mantis if you don't have some kind of magic guns from DLC. The Mantis has a woeful spare ammo supply, and so Incinerate helps out a little bit by adding damage to armor and damage to organics. I also like running around with the shuriken and pistol and throwing incinerates on stuff. Now while Incinerate does do organic CC, if you have a single target you want to CC, then you use Neural Shock early game. The reason is because recharge time is 3 seconds and on Incinerate it's 6 seconds, so you just want to be efficient with your cooldowns there. Archangel comes along level 7 with 15 points. I go ahead and continue investment in Incinerate, so... I'll get rank 3 and then I'll probably have a point left over. I don't bother investing that point in hacking or cryo ammo. You could get cryo I suppose, but it's not necessary at this point. Uh, you'll just continue using incinerate for armor damage and supplemental damage when power reloading and then neural shock for organic CC. And then for elites you can potentially cloak. If you haven't guessed it, then next up is to get Incinerate ranked up to rank 4. You know that the evolutions there are Incineration Blast, the AoE version, and then Heavy Incinerate. Uh, you can pick which one you like. I prefer Incineration Blast for multi-target damage. Some people think that Heavy Incinerate works a little better on Infiltrator for mini-boss damage since a lot of mooks will end up dying to single sniper shots, but it's up to you. I prefer the AoE. And then also you want to grab your third rank attack cloak and you'll be coming up on level 12 and you want to make sure you have a spare point for cryo ammo because that's when you'll hit horizon. And it's nice to have cryo ammo against collectors and also to insta-freeze kill the husks on that mission. So there you go, level 12 horizon. Next milestone is collector cruiser at level 16. And you should be able to rank up cloak first. 
Your two choices are enhanced versus assassination. This is not much of a choice. Enhanced just increases your duration and then you have 40% damage just like at rank 3. Assassination Cloak gives you 75% damage and you still have decent duration. Notice the recharge time doesn't change as you rank up Cloak and also recharge begins when Cloak breaks. I didn't mention that before but that's how that works. The cloak damage bonus is applied for in a brief window as you decloak, so it's not just one shot that gets the cloak damage bonus, it's it's a few, especially on rapid fire weapons. Anyway, you should have assassination cloak there, and then you could also get your passive ranked up to th level 3. You can just watch those incremental numbers increase there. And so that's a decent build at level 16 for fighting collectors. And it works as well if you want to go to Tuchanka before DC or even fight mercs because you have decent cloak, decent incinerate, and you have organic CC. You have a slight amount of synthetic CC, but right now you're not potentially strong against synthetics. Of course, if you're taking the Dream Team, Garrus and Miranda, it won't matter because you have dual overload. So as you continue to level up through around level 20, which is probably the far end of completing DCC if you try to delay it as much as possible, you'll have Operative ranked up. Two choices are Assassin or Agent. Agent's sort of a more power-focused passive you have 9% weapon damage, power recharge is minus 15%, sniper slow down 50% like rank 3, you have the max paragon renegade bonus, and you have a power duration bonus 15%. Problem with the power duration bonus is that on infiltrator vanilla powers it only applies to hacking and then cloak. Remember incinerate isn't really a duration power takes power damage bonuses and always applies for 3 seconds. Uh, because I love Incinerate so much, that makes Agent a little less valuable to me. On Assassin you'll note weapon damage 15%, power recharge minus 9%, sniper slowdown 60%, and then power damage bonus 15%, and of course Paragon Renegade. Now, I don't remember if I mentioned this before, but in Mass Effect 2, power damage bonuses do affect ammo power damage. It's just that it's not very substantial. In this case, your 15% would combine multiplicatively with this 30% here, so it would be 30% times, essentially, 1.15. And by mid to late game, that difference is going to be pretty small, so it's nothing to obsess with. But you should have room for another rank of Disruptor Ammo by level 20 and you should look like this. Which is a decent enough build for Widow or for a close range Infiltrator. Main key is that you'll still have Neural Shock for fast CC and then Incineration Blast for damage and multi-target CC. As you approach the late game you're gonna go ahead and probably get the last rank of disruptor ammo to level it up where you can choose either heavy or squad I usually take squad the reason being in mid to late game your total contribution of ammo damage to Shepard's weapon damage is relatively reduced because of the fact that ammo damage is always calculated off of base damage without weapon damage upgrades. So this 40 versus 60% isn't as dramatic as it would appear. Also heavy disruptor ammo is the only ammo evolution that has the potential to damage Shepard. As you note it says that can cause synthetics to critically overload and explode and if you're nearby when that happens you will take damage. I find that kind of irritating. If you're just going to stay in the rear with your Widow, then this isn't a bad choice though. I prefer Squad though. And then 
Your last nine points will go in cryo ammo. You rank that up. And then you want the squad evolution here. You always want squad cryo ammo. Now, depending on your mission order, you might have wanted to skip getting rank 3 and 4 of squad disruptor, or excuse me, of disruptor ammo and gone straight for squad cryo if you were going to do like melee creature missions or husk missions earlier. Of course, you can just retrain powers and switch back and forth. But this is kind of the way I like to do it, and the way that's fairly versatile. This should work with pretty much any weapon, work decently. Like I mentioned, the Infiltrator has snipers, SMGs, and pistols, which means on Collector Cruiser you'll have a choice between the Widow or adding assault rifle and shotguns. If you haven't played a Widow Infiltrator, it's worth doing at least once. It's pretty fun. You don't do the single target damage of a soldier, but it's still... still respectable damage, and it's hard for most of the other classes to match it. The one advantage you have over a soldier, though, is power reloading with incineration blast or heavy incinerate. That actually will help you get in a fair amount more Widow shots per mission. But, since Cloak's duration lasts for a little bit, the bonus damage does, I should say, the Viper's not a bad choice on Infiltrator either, so that allows you to take shotgun training and go a more balanced uh, combat approach with shotguns and then the Viper. Or you can even go for assault rifles, use the Vindicator or the Matic. Also pretty good. And that's about that. I skipped hacking completely, I don't really like it. I think with Squad Disruptor ammo, you have enough CC against Geth. Plus, synthetics are relatively less common in this game anyway. Of course, you could always respect if you want to play a Geth mission and want to have hacking. So, just briefly, if I was going to do a more synthetic based build, go ahead and level up some of the non-negotiable powers passive here. Assassin, of course, although Agent's okay with hacking. Go ahead, you'll need two points in or two ranks in incinerate, you only want squad disruptor. Then I would get just three ranks of hacking because you don't really need improved because the duration's longer than you need and area is not particularly helpful. The enemies usually get confused when you have too many hacked at once. So. And go ahead, put the rest in incinerate for area. Incinerate or heavy, doesn't matter. Then you have five points, you can get like rank two of cryo and rank two of neural shock, it doesn't really matter. Definitely not be using neural shock on a geth mission. But that is an alternative build here that also works, or you could have. Drop this three point in neural shot. It's up to you. I don't use hacking that much on Infiltrator, so that's why I didn't show a build with it before. Neural shock is by far my favorite power, bonus power on Infiltrator, but just briefly, the other ones. AP ammo doesn't really fit very well, and then Shredder sucks, so you don't want that. Defense powers, barrier, fortification, and GSB are still relatively poor. GSB is slightly better though if you get it to improved and get a weapon damage bonus out of it, but it's still not necessary. Slam is not a bad choice, it's like Neural Shock, but you can prime warp bombs if you don't mind being biotic 
character instead of a pure infiltrator, that's not a terrible choice. Reeve's not bad if you want to replace Incinerate and have a option against barriers. Shepard will be able to strip barriers at level 30, unlike Samara, if you have a little bit of biotic duration bonus. So that's not a terrible choice. The only problem is you might end up just spamming Reeve over and over again. And I wouldn't blame you because Reeve's a really good power. Energy Drain, not a bad choice either. It's not really necessary on Infiltrator. Usually if you are in trouble you can just cloak and get out of there. But it does give you uh, an area shield and synthetic damage power that you don't have otherwise. Dominate, kind of a hipster choice. You could run it with Agent and AI Hacking and be kind of some sort of Puppet Master Infiltrator. Warp ammo, I didn't mention this with the other two ammos, but this one has a place in some Widow builds against collectors. It's not hugely important to run warp ammo. But I'll look for some of the old threads on this, maybe, and throw them in the description. Inferno grenade I don't like on Infiltrator. If I was going to take a grenade, it'd be flashbang. This is pretty neat with a CQB Infiltrator, sometimes. And then Stasis. Good as a mini boss or elite CC power, and also okay for bonus damage. But as an Infiltrator you're not really hurting for single target damage, so I prefer to round out my Infiltrator with Neural Shot, especially early game. And then armor-wise, you just pretty much want weapon damage on most infiltrator builds. So that was it. The weakest class <laughs> in only a million words. So next I'll probably talk about engineer.